I gotta be honest with you, this TV review is kind of a big deal. It's not kind of a big deal, it's a really big deal for me. And I'll tell you why. Every year, this gentleman, Robert Zone, who owns Value Electronics, puts together a TV shootout where he invites all the foremost authorities on TVs and TV technology. They get in a room with all the best TVs of the year and they vote on them. And at the end of the day, they come out with what they claim is the best TV of the year. The TV behind me right now is supposedly that TV. I am, of course, talking about the Sony A9G OLED, the TV that finally knocked LG off of its perch. LG was the reigning champion for the last four years, and I personally have ranked their TVs as the best uh, here at Digital Trends, because they were. But this year does look a little bit different. The question is, do I agree with them? Is this really the best TV of the year? We're about to find out. I'm gonna talk about picture quality in a minute. I won't drone on too long. I know you guys hate it when I do that, but I have to talk about everything that isn't picture quality. So just forget this amazingness happening right here, right now, and take a look at the design of this television. I mean, the bezels are remarkably thin. The TV panel itself is very thin. It's got great cable management in the back, a small footprint for the stand, which I think is a really big deal for a lot of people. And it sits right down on the stand itself. So it kind of has this appearance of just floating on the media stand. And if you wall mount it, it's gonna look fantastic as well. Another thing that you wanna note, the screen is the speaker. So it's got a couple of actuators back there and the screen makes the sound. Also, if you have an elaborate home theater system with an AV receiver and what have you, you can use the TV as the center channel. There's little speaker inputs on the back. You just run your speaker wire to it and there's no need to have a separate speaker. It will function very well as the center channel. Now, audiophiles may balk at that because there is a notion of having voice matching across all different speakers, but I'm telling you, it functions really well. And hey, if you don't want a full on home theater system, this TV sounds fantastic all on its own. It's got a couple little subwoofers in the back, so it has a big robust sound. I totally approve of the sound quality of this TV. Now I wanna take a second to talk about Android TV. Historically, I've hated Android TV, and it's not the platform itself so much as the fact that it's a resource hog. Really hard to drive, but Sony made a chip that makes it lightning fast. So all the lag that I experienced and hated in the past is now gone. I'm not a fan of some of the sponsored content that I see popping up, but you know what? That's kind of par for the course with pretty much every smart TV platform these days. So yeah, I'm gonna call Android TV overall a win for this TV. I mean, you get Chromecast, you get the Google Assistant. It works great. Okay, now we're gonna get to the picture performance of this review. And I wanna remind everybody, what we're looking at is an LG OLED panel. What makes this TV different is the processing. So let's throw some patterns up there, see how that behaves, and then we can talk about really what the picture quality is like to experience when you're sitting in front of this thing. Okay, so if you follow my TV reviews, this pattern should look familiar by now. We've got really bright boxes in each corner. What we're looking for is halo, and there is none. Now, it may appear to you that there is, but that's actually just optical trickery. If I cover up one of these boxes with like a black piece of paper, there is a hard stop. It's jet black beyond the border of that white box, and that's what you expect from OLED. Same deal here. We have black boxes next to white boxes. We're looking for some bleed. We don't want those black boxes to look gray, which they will on most LED TVs. And here, again, we're getting perfect black levels out of these dark boxes. Things get a little bit trickier with this test pattern though. We're in HDR right now, and what we should be seeing on the right-hand side of the screen are three individual bars instead of just one big white mass. That indicates to me that this TV is clipping in that area. It's not doing too bad a job with the blacks. We're getting a little bit of resolution on the far left there before it drops to full black. But I find this really curious. Let's look at the next test pattern. This is also supposed to be a ramp, but I don't see any segmentation at all. Let me switch it to HLG HDR really quick. And now you can see in hybrid log gamma HDR, we are getting a ramp. And if I put this back into SDR mode, we'll see the ramp there as well, just not as bright. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here because I'm not seeing that kind of clipping in real life content. We'll circle back and check with another test disc in just a moment. Okay, so I just switched over to the new Spears & Munsell UHD evaluation disc. This thing is amazing for reviewers and calibrators. Um, and I'm happy to see what I'm seeing right now. So it appears that the TV is not actually clipping uh, until somewhere around 1600, 1700 nits, which is outstanding. That means that it's scaling everything from zero nits all the way up to that level very well. I'm happy to see this tone mapping. I don't know what's going on with my Video Forge Pro, but we'll figure it out. 
Otherwise, everything looks fantastic, especially the out-of-box color in the cinema mode is totally acceptable. I do think that this TV deserves uh, the benefit of a professional calibration, especially to get HDR just right. But make no mistake, right out of the box, this thing is going to dazzle you. Test patterns are great because they help us keep things objective. We can take measurements and we can drill down to where the TV is behaving particularly well or maybe not so well. But you don't need test patterns to see how absolutely beautiful this TV is. Everybody at Digital Trends who's come into this room and taken a look at this television, even just playing YouTube videos, has been absolutely gobsmacked. And that's because it just really launches out at you and grabs you. And this all comes down to Sony's processing. This has the best Sony processor yet. And I've been a fan of Sony's processing since the XBR days, back when they were making the Vega television. And yes, I just dated myself. But the fact of the matter is, I've always enjoyed the look of a Sony television and I'm especially enjoying the look of this particular Sony TV. It's an LG OLED panel, but it's Sony's magic processing that's really bringing it home. And I think the reason that this TV won the TV shootout that I mentioned earlier is because of that processing. I think that Sony has been very judicious about where it wants to put its peak brightness in the highlights and how it wants to handle low luminance levels in the black areas. Like all other OLEDs, it struggles a little bit in that area, but they managed to map everything so that everything you watch is just magical. It looks fantastic. Even cable TV looks good on this television and like cable doesn't look good on anything. That's Sony cleaning up the signal. So what you're getting here is absolutely amazing black levels, perfectly suitable brightness. I wouldn't worry at all about putting this TV in a bright room. It looks fantastic. The color is great. You sit down and you just love this TV. So are there any downsides? Well, yeah, as an OLED, it's susceptible to burn in under extreme circumstances. So here comes the disclaimer. If you watch the same TV channel every single day, all day for months and months and months on end, ultimately you could see a little bit of image retention or screen burn in happen. The Sony TV does have some stuff that helps try to abate that. But like if you abuse the TV with hardcore viewing like that, yeah, you're gonna get a little bit of burn in and maybe this TV isn't for you in that case. But for pretty much everybody else, if you're looking for the best picture quality money can buy, the Sony A9G is offering that right now. Is it the best TV I've ever seen? Well, there is the 8K OLED from LG that's pretty stinking fantastic, but I am comfortable calling this the best 4K TV I've seen so far. And it gets me really excited about where TV technology is going. How it could be better? Well, maybe if it was a little bit friendlier towards gamers, it doesn't have HDMI 2.1 spec. It does the EARC, so you get the uncompressed Dolby Atmos. And with newer EARC audio equipment, you won't have any latency with like a sound bar or what have you. But uh, it doesn't do variable refresh rate yet. And I think that's something we're gonna see next year. Are they expensive TVs? Yeah, they're a little pricey, but I mean, the picture quality you get for the price, I think is outstanding. We're looking at like 2,800 for the 55 inch. 3800 for the 65 inch, and let's say you wanna go crazy and get the 77 inch model, yeah, that's gonna run you about seven grand, which is super hefty. But I think $3,800 at a 65 inch is just money picture quality to me. Absolutely fantastic. So, best 4K TV of the year, absolutely worth buying, totally. Are there any major faults with this TV? No, I think it is setting the standard for everybody this year. Folks, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Hit like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Hit me up in the comment section. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? What else would you like to see done with this television? We'll try to make it happen. As always, here's a couple of videos we think you might like and always visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews.